Sane has had the first track outing since being fully tuned and it was a big, big track outing. Uh, we had uh, 250 kilometres or so of highway driving to and from the track, plus about uh, eight passes down the drag strip and another 10 to 12 passes at roll racing. So uh, time for an oil change and uh, I want to see how long it takes to crank the engine uh, to build oil pressure after changing the filter. And so I'm going to share that with you in a bit. Uh, so I have the Nexus oil pressure sensor here installed, which replaces the stock oil pressure switch. And so I can monitor and um, log the oil pressure. And so this is a fully built motor, epoxy closed deck, uh, forged rods, forged pistons. The clearances are about, off the top of my head, I think it was one, one and a half thou clearances on the main bearings and about two and a half to three thou on the rod bearings. Uh, so rod bearings are the, 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 the looser end. And because of that, when I built this engine, after using the running in oil, I decided to use a 5W40. So I want the lowest weight over here because uh, that's a cold start weight and I want that number to be the smallest number. Uh, but I thought I need, I should start with a 40 weight oil just maybe because of the extra clearances and I can monitor the oil pressure and see how it goes. And what I saw was using this liquid molly is that the oil pressures are a uh, at the higher end of the BMW specification for this engine. So BMW quote uh, four to six bar oil pressure for this engine, which is uh, 60 to 90 PSI. Now when using the Nexus oil pressure switch, or sensor, sorry, as you're gonna see, it, it adds effectively 15 PSI to the pressure because it's, it's uh, recording uh, atmospheric pressure, uh, even when there's no pressure in the engine, it reads 14.7 or 14 PSI or 15 PSI. So whatever pressure readings you get from a Nexus sensor, it's a real pain in the ass. They should have, it's a real big oversight, but it should be, uh, you have to deduct 15 PSI basically from the readings. And what I saw was using the liquid molly on the racetrack. Um, it wasn't fully tuned, uh, but it was pushing about, oh, it was about 75, 80% of its final horsepower at least. Uh, so it was definitely up there. And what I found with that oil is that I was uh, getting close to the, exceeding the specification in some ways, uh, well over sort of, or well, over, up, up around the 90 PSI anyway. When you take the 15 PSI off, the data log or the data from that sensor, uh, it ends up, I think it was, yeah, 85 to 90 PSI on average. So I was at the upper end. And that's okay, could have definitely lived with that, didn't have a problem being at that higher end. However, being higher told me that maybe I could afford to go down a grade to, to a 5W30. Uh, and I've got lots of this Castrol Edge. Uh, I run it in the Z4. And I thought, well, you know, changing it frequently enough, I believe that uh, frequency of oil changes trumps quality any day of the week. So yes, I 100% agree, Liquid Molly is a better oil. And if I was running uh, oil change intervals of 10 or 15,000 kilometers or, or, or more, I'd definitely choose the Liquid Molly. But when I'm changing it, every few hundred kilometers or even every few thousand kilometers maybe in the Z4, then uh, I think that the quality of the liquid molly doesn't really come into effect. The, the liquid molly is quality because it lasts longer, but if you're changing it frequently, then the Castrol Edge here, it is a, a BMW LL01 spec, uh, somewhere on there you can see it, it's the BMW LL01 and the ACA A3B4 spec, so this is I think for the US guys, the Euro version of Castrol Edge, uh, but I prefer to run it. I prefer it over LL04 oils because I use E85 and um, the LL01 oils have a higher TBN, uh, better ability to deal with ethanol in the fuel. So uh, that's the oil that I've had in it, is the Castrol Edge that I've drained and, and refilled. And so uh, I have run that oil now, sorry, on the, on the, yeah, on the track and the oil pressures are up about the same as the 5W40. And that really doesn't surprise me because when I've had the used oil analysis done on this Castrol Edge, it's, let's say it's a heavier 5W30 uh, than, than, a, than maybe average. Uh, so it's still up there and still at the higher end 
I think 80 to at least 80 to 85 psi pressure oil pressure and because it's thinner uh, and it's still running at that high pressure it means it's there's more of it going through the bearings um, and pulling the heat away from the bearings and and really that's the the major job of the oil so uh, yeah I, I strongly believe that monitoring oil pressure is the first step to choosing an oil and the second step is used oil analysis. So I'll send that Castrol edge away. I've actually got two lots of it. Uh, the dyno tune, the oil I used on the dyno for the dyno tuning, uh, and and then when it was fully tuned. Uh, so I'll send that away for UOA. We'll see how it goes. But let's get on and see how long it takes to crank to build oil pressure. So my fuel pumps are off and. We're going to start cranking it. I'm going to switch over to MHD and screen record and uh, we'll see how long it takes to crank and build oil pressure. So here we go, about to get started. So the sensor, the Nexus sensor, reads about 14 PSI at rest uh, because, yeah, it's not calibrated properly. It should read 0 PSI. reads 14 because that's atmospheric pressure and uh, it should be deducting 14.7 PSI or whatever from the reading for atmospheric, but they don't. Uh, so you've got to deduct 14 PSI from the reading that you see uh, of the oil pressure as well to, to counteract that I expect so let's start cranking and time how long it takes right, stop stop there and let the starter motor and battery rest go again and now you start seeing it rise. So there you go. So if you're doing an oil change, that's about how long you've got to crank it for. Probably uh, a good uh, 10 seconds if you've changed your oil filter. Uh, should be enough to build up oil pressure again before you start the engine. And now I'll turn my fuel pumps on and we'll start it. Straight away we're up to yeah, 90 odd PSI, taking off that 15 PSI or 14.7 or whatever. So it's running at about 75 PSI with 5W30 when cold. Uh, that'll come down as the oil heats up from my experience. I think with hot oil with a, at normal operating temperature it's about 40, uh, it reads about 40 or 45 PSI on here at idle, with maybe 35 to 40 PSI at idle. Um, which of course take off the, the 15 PSI, it's pretty low, but uh, yeah, as soon as you get the revs up and start putting the engine under load and yeah, running at higher RPM, uh, picks up very quickly. Now, since I already opened the can of worms showing uh, two different competing oil brands and grades, uh, I might as well finish off with another contentious point. And uh, it's like raising a red flag to a bull with us BMW guys. We all care deeply about doing the best for, for our cars, so, uh, we get passionate about these things, but uh, let me share with you my views on oil temps and oil grades. So uh, this engine, the N54 engine, by BMW was designed to run uh, hot oil temps. And you know that because the center of the oil gauge, the place where it was designed to be uh, resting, is about 120 degrees Celsius or 250 Fahrenheit, if my memory serves me and therefore that's where BMW designed it to be and some people get a bit nervous about those high temps uh, especially if you've come from a Volkswagen product where Volkswagen generally aim for about 105 degrees 100 105 degrees with their engines uh, this seems awfully high but I can tell you that the oils are able to withstand it they can easily handle up to 150 degrees Celsius so if you are concerned about the higher oil temps, then don't get lulled into the story of changing to a higher grade oil to resolve it. So some people will have their 5W30 and see higher oil temps and then start switching out to a 5W40 or a 10W40 or even a 10W50. And then they see their oil temperatures drop and they pop the champagne and report uh, passionately on Facebook that you know their oil temps are now better because they've changed to a heavier grade oil, so it must be a good thing. Well, I'm here to tell you that that may not be the case. So uh, it's very, I think there's multiple things that can go into it, but it is possible that your oil temps 
are reducing as you go to a higher grade oil because you're pulling less heat away from the bearings. If you imagine a very, very uh, thick oil in the engine, let's say like honey, uh, it wouldn't move very fast through the pump, it wouldn't move very fast through the bearings, and so it wouldn't really uh, get pushed through fast enough to pull the heat away from the bearings. And, and therefore, the overall temperature would never get up that high. Uh, that's exaggerating a bit, but that's really what, what is happening or what can happen. So if you, uh, if you are changing to a higher grade oil and you see your oil temperatures drop um, noticeably, then, then you should be concerned, not excited. And uh, really the only way to work on or know whether or not you should be going to a higher grade oil uh, is to have an oil pressure sensor or an oil pressure gauge in your car and if you don't have one of them then choosing to go to a higher grade is like walking into an auto parts store with a blindfold on and choosing your oil you really are, are not informed uh, you you need to have an oil pressure sensor now, if you don't have an oil pressure sensor and you're not sure, then I can tell you from my experience uh, with, with both uh, my low mileage Z4 engine, which uh, yeah had uh, 30,000 miles on it, about 42,000 kilometres when I bought it, uh, as well as this engine with 185,000 kilometres and new stock bearings in it, uh, that uh, 5W30 is perfectly safe. Uh, I've found it from my experience that it's fine. Uh, I've used the oil pressure sensor to verify it. So if you really aren't sure, your best bet is to follow the BMW recommendation, uh, which is generally a 5W30 uh, or a 5W40. But yeah, as I said, I tend to want to err towards the light rather than heavier. Stefan, why don't you take a moment and tell us who you are and what you do? Yeah, actually, my name is correct, Stefan, from Liquid Molly's technical department in Germany, Liquid Molly's R&D. So I'm from the headquarter. We're in the process of doubling the horsepower on this one. Nice. Um, how, I mean, how, how accurate is the, is the sticker on here? Because you go on forums, you go on Facebook groups, and everyone has their two cents on what weight they should, you know, that you should be running in your car. Of course, that sticker is accurate because that tells you typically what the engine was basically developed with. Um, I mentioned already accurate, uh, accurate oil pressure is the thing, um, treating the exhaust emission system, oil consumption keeping as low as possible. Uh, um, so long story short, uh, even if you modify your engine, a little bit easier tuning or heavy modifications, always stick with the oil spec that was required for the use with the original, with the stock car. Now, as far as, as what parameters to look for, we're gonna look for oil pressure, I guess oil temperature. Oil temperature you mentioned, which cannot be reduced by using a thicker viscosity. Right. Uh, higher oil temperature means simply install a bigger oil cooler to, yeah. to cool it down. Um, oil pressure, of course, you may get more RPMs out of it, so oil pressure is a thing. Um, but these are the main, the main topics you should uh, look on when you modify engines. 